It's time now for the Fox Report. And Sunday saw a shocking but sadly typical surge of migrants arrive at the port of Dover. GB News revealed over 400 people made the crossing on the busiest day yet of 2023. As we've grown wearily accustomed to by now, toothless French naval vessels shadowed the small boats while refusing to intervene or intercept them on their perilous journey across to the UK. With weather conditions improving, Border Force sources now fear the annual number of channel crossings could be, wait for it, almost double this year, with 80,000 migrants entering the already overwhelmed asylum system. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak recently pledged to stop these small boats, and this latest influx shows there is no time to waste. But Lawrence Fox, 80,000 by the end of this year? I mean, surely at that point that becomes politically unsustainable for Sunak. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, you know what? You've got to compare this, Dan, to what's going on with the open southern border in the United States and the absolutely horrific murders of um, some people in California this weekend, including a mother and her children. Um, the problem that, with this woke madness is that what happens is genuine refugees are getting ignored. And economic migrants, uh, mostly from Albania at the moment, are um, able to come back and forth willy nilly. I think we play a uh, game of bumper cars with them. And um, you go out and get that rubber dinghy and push it straight back to France. That's what I do. Now, Lawrence, last year's Brit Awards saw bosses finally cave to woke pressure to introduce gender neutral awards. But after just 12 months, an embarrassing U turn uh, could already be on the cards. So while 2022's ceremony saw Adele claim the newly created Artist of the Year, this year's Brits didn't have a single female nominee, uh, which I did predict. And, you know, look, the Artist of the Year award may have been designed to be more inclusive and relevant, but in reality, Lawrence, I would claim it has translated to blatant misogyny. So isn't this actually proof now that these gender neutral awards, which are apparently very woke, are actually part of a war on women? Who would have thought, Dan, that um, woke would go to die at the Brits? Uh, I'm sure you've had a few good evenings at the Brits. Oh, yes, I have. I certainly have. But um, the, this, I saw Owen Jones uh, on uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter, sorry, um, when I was uh, looking through my, my, my sock puppet account, talking about the fact that they need to have uh, quotas <laughs> for uh, women. So it's all. But they don't Owen know what Jones a woman is. is. Called... How can they have quotas when they don't think women exist? I like, know. does Sam and Smith time, count gender... under the quota? The only time gender really matters, Dan, because it's a made-up thing, is in, like, French, when you're learning it at school. Je me suis levé, tu t'es levé, il s'est levé, il s'est levé. It okay. doesn't exist other than that. You have biological sex, and that's the end of it. You know, with a very small minute shy of people who are part of an insex um, thing, which is part of the thing. It's absolutely insane. They've got to stop meddling with our lives. Just let us get on with it. We, I like amazing actresses, and I like amazing actors, and I like amazing female singers, and I like amazing male singers. And, you know, you get male singers who are quite effeminate, and you get female singers who are quite masculine. It's all great. It, it doesn't need meddling with. And the Brits have basically created a situation for themselves where woke has gone to die. And it's well, look, I hope all of the other gender neutral extremists are looking at the case of the Brit Awards and actually thinking twice before they make such a ludicrous decision. Uh, but look, Lawrence, the uber woke Cambridge Council. Oh, yes, they're back. Their first civic event since voting to move towards vegan menus uh, went down about as well as you'll expect. Almost zero guests were even willing to try. The vegan options leading to, quote, significant food waste and some very hungry guests at a time when lots of us, Lawrence, let's be honest, are struggling to feed our own families. But the council is digging its heels in with Labour councillor Richard Swift stubbornly explaining we cannot force people to eat food they do not want to eat. The task for us is to make it so good people want to eat it without being told. So apparently now the only way we can convince people to eat vegan food will be to trick them into it. I mean... Look, Lawrence, uh, this one doesn't surprise me at all because vegan food on the whole is completely disgusting to taste and actually very unhealthy, very, very high in calories. Yet this council still trying to shove plant-based food down the throats of 
the residents of Cambridge who have said, we just don't want this. I do see, I love the fact that they didn't want to write the second sentence. We can't force people to eat food that they don't want to eat. It's like, eat grass, pleb. It's like, you know, they, it, we live in this world where, where half of the people just want to be left alone to get on with their lives. And the other half of the people want to tell you what to do. And I was thinking about this all day as I was driving, you know, I was going back and forth a manic, manic day to day. And there's signs everywhere telling you what you can and can't do. Yeah. Some of them are useful, but not telling us that, you know, my kids have got meat free Monday at schools. I got no email from the school. I found out, you know, from my son who goes, there's no meat. I need a, I need a packed lunch on that. It's like, stop trying to make me eat grass. If you want me to eat grass, I'm not going to do that. And if you're going to try and force everyone to, uh, everyone else to eat grass, why don't you just go and deliver your uneaten, highly processed rubbish to the Just Stop Oil protesters so they don't freeze to death during this period of extreme climate change? <laughs> yeah, the, the coldest night, Lawrence, last night in 12 years. Uh, surprisingly, that's not leading the BBC News or Sly News or ITV News. But do you remember early in the summer, uh, we had a hot day and all of a sudden the world was coming to an end. Interesting. Interesting. It's always a Heathrow, have you noticed? It was the hottest Heathrow has ever been and it's the coldest Heathrow has ever been. I'm like, should we check our thermometers? And also, should we just check our anxiety? We're yeah. living in a period of extreme anxiety. And what we need to do, especially for our kids, because it's all about our kids at this juncture, is just turn around and say, there's not too much to worry about, guys. Yes, there are going to be challenges in the world that face us. But the fact that the sun is going to destroy us all and burn us all up in a big ball of hell is not one of the top ones. The top one is, can you heat your house? Can you feed your family? Yeah, yeah. Is there a cost of living crisis? Why are the billionaires getting richer and why are the poorest getting poorer? And why are they being told to turn off their heating? You know, again, I take you back to California where they, where families of immigrants gather in Walmart just so that they can be, have air conditioning. You know, just so they can be cool because they can't afford through these lunatic green policies of the woke arati of Gavin Newsom and that lot. It's too much. Leave us alone. We just want to get on with our lives. Lawrence Fox with the Fox Report. And of course, there'll be much more where that came from at eight o'clock tomorrow night here on GV News.